He's not even able to recall the last time he was in Ukraine. Giuseppe was only three years old when he left an orphanage in the Donbas region following the death of both his parents. Since being adopted by Sicilian family, he has lived in Italy and only speaks Italian. But he feels 100% Ukrainian and the thought of visiting the country one day has never left him. We meet him in Milan to follow him on his journey back to Ukraine for the first time in 25 years. A different trip than the one he had originally planned. His country is at war and is determined to defend it. I can't just wait at home and watch TV and do nothing to help my fellow citizens. I know I might get killed because there's a war and bombardment. I think it's something to do with my DNA and my Ukrainian side. His passport picture is one of the few and earliest memories of his Ukrainian childhood. Giuseppe has applied to be a foreign fighter and is ready to join the local army. But he would not be able to embark on such a mission without the help of Dorin. Since the beginning of the conflict, he has been traveling between Italy and Ukraine. Carrying people back and forth while bringing essential goods into the country is what I'm good at. If they tell me they need me on the front line, I'll go and fight. Many people have joined the army, but someone has to provide these items. People need these goods. Without food, those men would not be able to fight. Two other women have joined the trip. They have left Italy to offer their help. One of them shows me pictures of kids building barricades in her city, I'm ready to take up arms if necessary, she tells me. I'm not scared. Along the way, Giuseppe often mentions his adoptive parents. Leaving them behind hasn't been an easy choice for him. When I said goodbye to my dad at the airport, I told him, I'll promise I'll be back. But if I don't come back, please remember, I loved you so much, even if you're not my biological parents. We have nearly arrived at the border crossing into Ukraine. Giuseppe doesn't know what awaits on the other side, but above all, he feels glad to reconnect with his past and to offer his help to a country he was forced to leave too soon. Giorgio Orlandi at the Romania-Ukraine border for Euronews.